Classic Rock from the Cars at Northeast PA's Classic Rock. Rock 107. It's a Prospector Show. And Kate, it is time for what I'm sure is your favorite favorite part of every day. Breakfast? Uh, no. How about the epitome of masculinity? Uh. Hey, hey, hey. Mr. Manley here with lesson number 614 in How to Be Manly. I got a call from a friend asking if I'd wash his kids for a few nights and also get them off to school each day. Since he and his wife have won a free trip to Vegas. Feeling like John Candy from the movie Uncle Buck, I said, sure. I work from home anyway, so with the school in walking distance of their place, I packed up my computer, some personal belongings, and was on my way. When I arrived, they must have been rehearsed as all three children said, hey, look, it's Uncle Buck. Yes, three little ones. I started thinking, what the heck did I get myself into? Well, the first morning, as we got close to school, I spied a crossing guard. And believe me, with one look at her, you can understand how she could stop traffic. She was a real head snapper, dressed in school colors and greeting everyone. She said hi to me and said, I'm crossing guard safety. I replied, really? How about later? You show me your safety switch. She said, you're funny. Well, my last day of taking care of the kids and flirting with the crossing guard came, and it seemed to be reciprocated, so I thought I'd ask her out. I said, crossing guard safety, this is my last day of children duty, which means I'm on duty for other activities. Would you like to meet me for dinner and drinks later? She said, okay, and we made a plan to meet that night. She walked in looking beautiful. She told me her real name was Sandy. I said, I feel like I already know you, but I've been wondering why you wanted to be a crossing guard. She told me it takes me back to being a little girl when I enjoyed the swing set, the slide, and the teeter-totter. But now I'm too big. I thought to myself, I'll take Sandy back to the playground tonight, but do so in a manly manner. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, follow along in your manly manual, page number 614, and repeat after me. Number one, you missed the swing set? Here, check out this swing. It comes with its own set. Number two, I'll show you my version of the slide. If you're open to it, we can let it slide. Number three, tonight, let's play teeter-totter. We can go up and down all night long. Soon after, as Sandy slides in and delivers a blow to your swing set, which makes your teeter no longer totter, you'll realize just what kind of man you really are. Until next time, this is Mr. Manley, saying be manly, and good day. You can still reach out and touch someone. Oh, yay! Just get permission first. If you were smart, you do the same. Send Prospector a message with Open Mic, a free download from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. And let it know what's on your mind. Not a bit. Breaking the news that's already broken. It's time for Prospector's Briefs. On Rock 107. Chick-fil-A is planning a streaming service. It will be the only streaming service that's closed on Sundays. You can now stream Horizon and America's Saga on Max. You won't because you have good taste, but you can. Rick Springfield turns 75 today. Nowadays, he wishes he had Jesse's Rascal Scooter. It's 60 minutes meets gone in 60 seconds. Tune in Monday for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. Some things are just too scary for kids. You know, we're adults. Good morning. It's the Prospector Show on Rock 107. And uh, Kate, have you seen Alien? Is it Romulus? Yet? Romulus. Have you seen that? I have not seen it yet. I'm, I'm going to see it. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to go see it. So why have you not seen it? Because it's terrifying. Aha. Uh -huh. Too scared. I'm too scared. All right, look, I get it. I'm scared of most horror movie commercials. Uh, sometimes just seeing the posters in the theater when you walk by, I'm like, <laughs> I can't even look at that. But did you see the original Alien movie? Oh, of course. How old a person were you when you saw that movie? Probably a teenager. Teenager, okay. Yes, teenager. Uh, so Alien Romulus topped the box office in its opening weekend. Huge yeah. movie, massive. It was a blockbuster in June. Just a head up. Not, not, um, not for kids. No. Not, no. Uh, some parents apparently did not realize that with the original Alien, 30, like 45 years ago when that came out. Yeah, 1979. People took their kids to that movie. Ah! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so someone posted a local news interview from 1979 of a reporter asking parents if they regretted bringing their young kids to see the movie. Do you know that this was an R-rated movie when you brought him? Yes, we did. Are you sorry you brought him? Yes, <laughs> I am. Are you glad you saw it? Yeah. 
Are you sorry, sir, that you brought your son along to see Alien? No, ma'am. I think you should have seen it. It's something that he needs to know that things could like that could happen in life. That could be a true story based on, you know, science or science. But we, we never know what's going on on the outside of the world. Did the movie scare you at all? Yes, ma'am, it did. Would you recommend to your little friends who are your age to go see it? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Now, that second guy who was talking about you never know what's going on with science and this could be a thing in the real world. Back in 1979, when that interview aired, you know 90% of people are like, yeah, right, buddy. But now, with all the recent news that's come out about UFOs and the government hiding mm -hmm. information, you're like, dude's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's scary. Uh, so taking kids to a scary movie like Alien Ramos, uh, that's kind of like giving them an espresso and then expecting <laughs> them to take a nap, right? <laughs> Good luck with that shot. The following rant may cause you to pull your hair out, scream at the radio, punch the dashboard. Complaints should be addressed to loudmouth yambag at rock107.com. Rock 107's Prospector, and here's what has me jacked. A couple of things I hear a lot that I could do without. When someone says I stub my toe on the proverbial wall, I hate people who call everything proverbial, even if it has nothing to do with a proverb. Some people refer to the proverbial bucket. Really? What's the proverb about kicking the bucket? There's a metaphor about kicking the bucket, but not a proverb. Do these people even know what proverbial means and i hate sayings like when one door closes another one opens well not if it's a coffin door all right on to one of my favorite topics driving i live right by a four-way stop sign and let me tell you this sign might just as well not exist at any of these corners no one bothers to slow down much less stop at the signs i can't tell you how many times some soccer mom in a rush almost plows right into me as i'm trying to get in my car why because she's in such a hurry that she hollywood stops at the sign and never bothers to see me opening my door now invariably these idiots look at me like i did something wrong look stop means the cessation of all momentum not slow it down to 10 miles an hour and hope for the best you know these jackals are all thinking hey it's a four-way the rest of them will stop i can keep going i'm waiting no wait scratch that i'm hoping to see a nice four-way collision of rushing jerk sticks trying to get to work on time because god forbid they don't hit the snooze button three or four times that'll slow you down yam bags i'm prospector i'm for the people Who's with me? I gotta, 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 gotta go crazy. Ever see the crazy guy screaming at the wall outside the Times building? Where does this rage come from, my son? Tweet us with hashtag I found Prospector and we'll come and get him. Prospector. Mornings on Rock 107. Life's pretty tough right now. There's plenty of bad news, but it's not all bad. It's time. For the brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. A guy in Massachusetts delivered his wife's baby on the side of the highway this month after they couldn't quite make it to the hospital. He called her an absolute legend, and the new daughter Summer is doing great. Bonus, he didn't lose his wedding ring, which came off during the delivery. He was pretty sure it was somewhere in the grass, so he went back out there to the side of the highway and found it with a metal detector. Thanks. We needed that. The brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's the saying, but maybe this is just being paranoid. It's Prospector Show on Rock 107. Kate, police in California say homeowners have been blurring the image of their home on Google's map, on Google Maps, to discourage burglars from targeting their homes. Have you seen this thing? And you know I that? have, and can, yes, you can do that. Oh, uh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. on, on your computer, enter your address on Google Maps and navigate to Street View. Click on the three dots and then select Report a Problem. Okay. Then you can request to blur something, so your home, a person's face, a vehicle, your license plate, anything. Even you sunbathing naked out front. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? But it does not work on your phone. It's not a mobile thing. So when you say it doesn't work on the phone, you mean you can't blur it on the phone. But it doesn't yeah. mean it's like if you blur it, it'll still show to blur it on mobile app, on mm. the mobile app. Yes. Yeah, that I know because I checked. I went and looked. <laughs> yeah, I went and looked because uh, years ago I blurred my house. So I'm just going to like, yeah, there's the neighborhood. And you'll see, oh, look, blur. Oh, check that out. Yeah, so it's all blurred out. Uh, I didn't do it for any of those reasons. Blur, Google will already blur uh, things like fa faces, license plates, any way that's automated. So they could miss something. Yeah. That's kind of why I went at it and did that there. I had no idea. I wasn't worried about burglary. There ain't nothing in my house to steal. 
Yeah, I knew that they had an algorithm that did the license plates. Right. Um, some people think Google Maps could be a security issue if valuables are shown or if a would-be thieves could scout your place for things like cameras and weak spots that they can gain entry to. Mm. So, like, I guess if you're a tech-savvy thief, you could case a neighborhood discreetly. But on the other hand, it, you're just showing your house, just like anyone could see it if they kind of drove by the neighborhood. The police are saying that blurring your home might make you feel more secure, but it could also backfire. Right. Thieves on Google Maps might be intrigued, <laughs> thinking that there are valuables to be hidden. What are they blurring you over know, there? What you got in there? Hmm. <laughs> it really, this all begs the question, are there actually any thieves using Google Maps in the first place? To me, that's unclear. I'm not sure it's really happening. We know this, according to the Department of Justice. Home burglaries are exceedingly rare. Hmm. Fewer than 1% of household experience a burglary. And that number has been dropping steadily in the past two decades. But yeah. that being said, my childhood home has been burglarized. Oh, it was mine as well. All but, right. <laughs> but mine was in like the 70s. It happened in the 70s when crime was more rampant. Experts say having a sign warning of a security system is a deterrent, though. So, you know, my advice, you sign up for ADT. Then you quit ATT and go, I'm giving you the sign back. Ladies and gentlemen, grab the kids, call your neighbors, and gather around the radio. It's now time to announce the winner of Prospector's Jam Bag of the Week, as decided by you at rock107.com. We uncover the most baffling, ridiculous, pathetic, cockeyed, laughable, preposterous blunders in the world of misdeeds. Nominee number one. When you say you've had an explosive event in the bathroom, you usually don't mean an actual blast. A 46-year-old man in Texas is facing charges for booby-trapping toilets at two different car washes to cause explosions when people sat down. Now, it doesn't sound like they were big enough to destroy the whole bowl. He apparently would put fireworks under the seats designed to explode under pressure. I mean, that would really scare the crap out of you, right? The first incident happened July 20th at a place called the Wash Tub near San Antonio. The woman who sat on the toilet was injured, but no word on how badly. She was very shaken up by it, though, and left before the cops arrived. Six days later, there were two more toilet explosions at a different wash tub location in San Antonio. The victims were a female employee and a young girl, and it sounds like they also suffered minor injuries. Cops arrested 46-year-old Paul Allen after security footage showed him walking into the bathrooms right before the explosions happened. He hung around outside till he heard the blast, then left. Turns out he's a frequent customer and even used his membership cards on the days it happened. He's facing charges for arson, causing reckless damage or bodily injury. Nominee number two. Okay, it's clear this guy wasn't working at a genius bar. An employee at a phone repair store in Oklahoma City was arrested earlier this month after he sent himself an explicit video from a female customer's phone while he was supposed to be fixing it. I guess he thought he could get away with it by just texting it to his phone number, but he was caught before he even got back to his phone. The woman was using her computer while the phone was being fixed, and it was synced with her phone. She saw a notification that a text had been sent from her number to an unknown number. The message was the naughty video, a video that she kept in a locked photo album, so she immediately knew that he had accessed it and then sent it. Also, the phone number it sent to was the same one that was on the guy's business card he'd given her. He was charged with larceny and computer crime. Nominee number three. Stinky feet can be offensive, but no one should die over it. A 48-year-old man in Iowa named David Carpenter was arrested for attempted murder after he shot his father in the face. Thankfully, his dad is expected to make it. At the hospital, the father told police he and his son were arguing about David's stinky feet before the shooting. David backed up that story. He said he was in the living room with his father, who was in a motorized scooter, and his father accused him of having stinky feet. That ignited a larger heated argument, and at some point, David went to another room to get a gun, came back and pointed it at his father's face, but he says he accidentally pulled the trigger. David was also charged with child endangerment because there were two children younger than 14 in the home at the time. Nominee number four. No one wants to be assaulted, and it is a crime, but let's be honest, there are worse things than being attacked with pasta. A 21-year-old woman in Florida named Nakia Davis was arrested last week after she attacked her sister with ravioli. Literal ravioli. The sisters were arguing. Nakia was mad because her sister brought home some food but wasn't sharing it, so she was fired up. She grabbed a plate of raviolis and threw it at her sister. Cops were called, and when they showed up, the sister still had sauce from the raviolis on her. I didn't say if that was tomato, pesto, cheese, butter-based sauce, I don't know. Nakia admitted throwing the pasta and was charged with domestic battery. 
which is a misdemeanor. And the winner is... The cell phone repairman who was caught texting a woman's nude photos from her phone that he was working on to himself. Congratulations, you're the Yam Bag of the Week. Keep it here for all the nominees for Prospector's Yam Bag of the Day. Weekday mornings on Rock 107. Thanks for listening to Prospector's Prime Cuts podcast. Be sure to catch us live weekdays from 5.30 to 10 a.m. on Rock 107 or online at rock107.com or the Rock 107 app. A free download for your Android or iPhone. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss Prospector's Prime Cuts.